you must admit, when Kenny and the rest of the Americans came in, things changed a lot because the, the fun, but the fun, not just the racing, an just hour, the fun. an hour, our touching and feeling and talking created Lucanelli. They changed everybody on how things it's were. True. It's true. You know? It's true. And it was fun. It was more. Uh, the Marcos book on the yeah. podium. Yeah. <laughs> the same Barry, the same. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Make a dynamic. It, it wasn't just different because of the era. It was different because of the people Absolutely. that were brought, brought there. You remember how funny Barry was. I remember you with the. Ah. With the fire Tardos, yes, I used to get in trouble. <laughs> I was I was a young schoolboy. I was Absolutely. like I was like uh, Pedro Acosta. I was 19 years old, you know. Pedro is like uh, 20 years ago. Yes, 25. Pe Pedro, he is enjoying his life. He's enjoying racing. This is not work whatsoever. Absolutely, he doesn't yes. complain. It's about having fun. I hope so. He stay, he stay, because you understand after the the factory. Yes, I no, understand. Randy. No, no, no. I, you know, you know. So I, I don't remember his name. Who does the the television for uh, Spanish TV? But doesn't. Uh, yeah, but, but was, he was here. Uh, Mila, maybe. No. no, not now. But now he Alex. was out there. Well, you know the guy. Anyway, we were. I I came up behind him and I grabbed his butt like normal, and he turned around and he's oh, and then he says he points to Pedro. He goes, this guy never complains. This not this. I said because he's having fun. Beautiful. You, you he know? like he like it. We like to, to race. To, 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 and, and racing is playing for us. Absolutely, I know. But you speak with the, the rider of today, the majority, right? Like, okay, so. Huh? I'm going to grab your mic to start this. So, we are here in the company of Randy Mamola, the motorcycle. best rider of the world. <laughs> I know. 500cc one, one. legend. First man to get a podium with a Kajiva, and who was your boss? The first podium of Kajiva was in Franco Champ <laughs> on the wet. Yes, he's arrived it, third. Inter intermediate. I, you remember? He arrived third with the Pirelli. It was unbelievable. It was an amazing time. So <laughs> yes, the, the, the Castellones, you know, uh, the Claudio, uh, Claudio, Claudio and, and Gianfranco. I, obviously, obviously, to me, I met both brothers at the same time. Uh, but having Carlo Pernet as your manager, uh, the team manager of, uh, of the I situation, very well. made it very, very Italian, you know? Very yeah. uh, uh, true uh, Italian. Exactly. True Italian, Randy. And very fun. So I just want to kickstart this conversation by asking the obvious question. Very, with uh, um, MotoGP becoming American, yes, they said that Dorna is going to stay here for a while, but as Paolo pointed out in some conversations, was the same for Eccleston. We were supposed to stay three years and after nine months they kick him out. So are we facing a revolution? And my other question is like, when are the American riders coming back to dominate the class if that's possible? <laughs> Maybe 25 years. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, thanks, so, to, uh, Randy, thanks to Wayne that make uh, a good job. Yes. But uh, the culture now is difficult. Was better when you, yourself, Kenny, Freddy, and blah 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 is another history. America, yeah. America changed a lot. Uh, you know where where I grew up in the Bay Area, near near 50 minutes south of San Francisco in Santa Clara, San Jose Airport. There, there were five places to ride within one hour to my house. Now there is zero. Uh, why? Because it's Silicon Valley. It's where the computers are made. It's where uh, the technology is. But this took years. So I started riding in 1972. There was nothing. There were orchards, things like this. Now, if you buy a motorcycle, where, where I come from, you have to drive maybe two hours to ride the motorcycle. Dirt, dirt bike, for example. Uh, you still have uh, Laguna Seca, Sears Point, these racetracks. Ooh. But you can do some club, some club things or something like that. But it's complain, completely changed. So for young people to be introduced to it, it's almost impossible because no one's going to buy a four-wheel quad or anything like this if you've got to drive two hours, which is four hours, to do a trip of, of, of riding. So this is why in motocross, supercross, it's still very famous. In Los Angeles, all the motocross riders live there or Florida. Uh, the Supercross guys, and this is what's benefited for that. Uh, there was a stage where uh, AMA, American Motorcycles, had a great championship. We had two-stroke, 
more cheap uh, to ride. I was riding TZ 750 in 1977 when I was 17 and all of this. This changed a lot. Changed when I lot. came over, you remember, before Wayne and Kevin came over, they were racing Superbike. Yeah. The handlebar like this, Ooh, like Wayne Gardner. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Big one. Sure. So there's, there's a lot to talk about. There's a lot of understanding, but there's just not enough time on your camera uh, to be able to say all that. So for Wayne to try to make the next rider, we still have a ways to go. Uh, a lot of riders in England uh, or in Germany or mm -hmm. other places go to the Spanish championship. Uh, even if you're Italian, you go either to the Italian championship or there to learn the experience on good racetracks, good competition, oh. good bikes, and you have good teams. Back then, uh, when Kenny came, Yamaha was Yamaha International. Honda was uh, in oh. Alst, Al Al Belgium. Uh, these were really spe specific, sp specified. Now everything's in Italy or in Spanish uh, for Moto2 and Moto3. So you've got to be a part of that kind of culture to really get that. I know that John Hopkins is starting something with Ovale here in the States and trying to grow that, but that's going to take time. So just last week, I, I see Irv two times because I've been in California and Irv Kenamoto. So Irv, I don't see any problem of uh, any team like Trackhouse having Miguel Oliveira and Raul Fernandez because Irv Kenamoto had Luca Calalora. Uh, he didn't have an American rider. He was an American thing. It was it was about and Kenny Roberts had John Michel Bale. And uh, yeah, I know uh, and, Randy, uh, the style of dirty dirty track short track was uh, the the, 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 the American, style of yeah. American style. Yes. When they arrive, everybody they win. Yes, because so, nobody makes this style. And nobody. and so, and so, what Valentino took from from us, us meaning learning about dirt track and everything, he built a ranch. Kenny was, we were Lorenzo, uh, John Michel Bale, everyone was training in the winter at Kenny Roberts Ranch. Eventually, Kenny said we have to make something. So now it's called Rocco's Ranch, but it was Kenny Roberts Ranch at. Momolo circuit. I remember that you have a drag and yes. everything. Everything. Sometimes on the dirt. Exactly. Sometimes on the dirt. So, so with, with that, uh, the Spanish, the Spanish were hungry. They were uh, full. There was a lot of money involved with two-stroke because it was easy with two-stroke. But four-stroke became so expensive. expensive. But if you imagine the amount of dirt track overnight that came was uh, fast. And then this, this produced these young riders that are growing through here today and even, even before. And unfortunately for us, uh, it just hasn't gone that way. Think about this. We, you, you know, Acosta and uh, the riders in the World Championship are amazing and great. But to talk about them being a rookie while they've already raced Moto3, Moto2, and MotoGP is not a rookie. When we arrived, first time we saw the circuit, we were on the podium, winning races, in or the in, in, the, in, the, in the championship. Kenny's first time going to Assen, the very first time, he was pole position with Goodyear tires that they never use on the, on the racetrack. You this, remember the if you want to talk rookie, uh, this, is, this was rookie. Uh, but today's athlete has PlayStation, has uh, obviously uh, Red Bull rookie, Moto, Moto, Moto 3, Moto 2, to get to the final. Where we were, I was 19 when I See, it was, uh, was completely a, different. A, a, able to get on. And uh, my podium was not on a KTM factory bike. My podium, first podium was in 79, was a Serge Zago production bike. A production Suzuki you can buy. You remember uh, when you make the 100 mile in Imola? Yes, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is it. When they arrived in Mola, arrived the Kenny. Arrived 200 mile. Um, it was 200 mile Daytona, 200 mile uh, uh, Imola, and Imola. Paul Ricard. And Paul Ricard, Monza, Paul Ricard. You know, I have many pictures about this. So again, I, I know that I'm talking a lot. I know that I'm talking, but it's impossible to, to not say things unless... Okay, but can I now say like Dorna is uh, Spanish and the Spanish Academy really came to fruition. Okay, we have a Nieto and everything, but now it's a completely different powerhouse. When Dorna bought MotoGP, or around there, with Crivillé and then all the others. For me, Dorna make a big mistake. Uh, the big mistake with Dorna 
is uh, don't use the professional and technical people that understand the race. Randy start a moment with Dorna and after finish. And they don't understand that the people that have to manage this sport must be an next rider because they know the race, they know the rules, they know the bike. And for me, Dorna make this mistake. Don't use the professional people that was ready to go. Yeah. Because I remember, Randy, you are ready to go. Yes. And you, and you work for a, for a short time. Yes. But the problem is that they understand, they don't understand. It's better to have the people that understand the race. Now we have some real stupid. Uh, there are people that judge that don't understand what happens. And this is a bad uh, for, for the MotoGP, eh? So things have changed I, a lot. I think so, eh? No, friend, uh, listen, there's a lot of things that, of course, Dorna did well. From 92 and so on. Their television, the camera work, everything they did. That was their, for me, their forte. That's their level of what it was. And they still are growing so much with that kind of stuff. But Dorna controlled a lot and kept it way too much to themselves instead of let it, letting it expand. So even, even in the years uh, when we were coming over, 70, 70s and the early 80s, Philip Morris used to make us learn how to talk in front of a camera. Because the Bravo. first thing you need to do is be able to speak and sound well. Because if you don't sound well, no one wants to know what sponsor you are and who, who you are. And this today is not happening and now. True. Yes, some of them speak decent, but watch Formula One, watch this. Ah, and the yeah. next time I hear somebody say, ah, but Formula One is shit, or Formula One is this, listen, for Formula One grew a lot with Liberty. It's the show. Because Liberty understands the camaraderie with the fans. The other thing I will tell you about is track house. For the people who understand English or don't, please go to track house Instagram and watch their videos and what they're doing, interacting already with the public. In Portugal, an Australian guy for their social media goes there with hats and shirts. Okay, answer the question. And you know the Portuguese, they're speaking difficult English, but they're having fun. They will always remember Trackhouse. And this is what uh, Justin uh, Marks, this is what Justin Marks saw in Austria. The KTM grandstand, the camaraderie that you have with this. Once you, you have that, this is what NASCAR has and so on. This is the excitement. And for the people who consider that Formula One is boring and so on, tell me why riders in World Championship and MotoGP have to close the throttle because their tire temperature is too high. What does this sound like? Sounds like Formula One. But we're getting into that category. And you know, what Carla was saying yeah, yeah, is that there was a lot of things that were not technician. Kenny Roberts was the first guy to build his own bike. Uh, I'm sorry, because Patton was there. But I mean, to run that team, build his own engine, and really do these kind of things. And Dorna didn't understand what he was trying to create. And eventually Kenny got full and he quit. And, and I think with all the American structure or the British Suzuki team and all of this being involved, it just became a Spanish and Italian championship, if you will. It is still a world championship. I love it. I've been traveling for 45 years since 1979. It's in our blood. So but there's it. things that really we understand, but we have to live with at the moment. And uh, see, the problem there is not many people that understand it. Right? Is it no, because the generations that don't, they, they don't generation. have it. Completely, yeah. completely different. Completely one, uh, in different. In Italy, when day you are younger, four, till uh, 30 years ago, when you are 14, the first thing that you ask to the mother and father is the little 50 cc. Yeah. Now, at 14, uh, they ask this one. This is a difference. And I, probably this is a big problem. Yes. I, I think there's a little bit of jump there because the, you're, you're, I'm saying like that there is a political side that needs to be announced with, with uh, the spectacle that it needs to be improved. But at the same time, you're saying like that there is not an academy. And what I'm saying is like when Dorna put money and zero the world onto Spain, the riders came. Can that happen with America? But now with the MIA, something is... It's, it's going it's to take eh? time. Uh, you know, the Ovales, uh, it's going to take time with these people. Okay, 
Joe Roberts has been around for seven years already. And look at how difficult it and is. Maybe the next year I go in Maybe. Maybe. But look at and look but look at how difficult this is. Uh, the the Valentino's at, uh, ca camp. This breeds every day they're riding, all the time, even more Bedelli. And all these guys, they understand. Me, Kenny, Wayne, all these guys. But as I said, the the pot to get the riders is very small. And uh, because even, even when Liberty announced on CNBC, there's a video on, on, on their live television about we've taken over, we bought a percentage of uh, MotoGP and we're going to do this. The, the lady who talks about the stock market and all that says, we've never heard of MotoGP. 